in the Word of God, I want to go to John chapter 18 again this week. John chapter 18. So if you have a Bible, turn to John chapter 18. I would encourage you to do that so that you can see what God is saying in His Word for yourself. Um, <clears throat> use your app, use your iPad, use your phone, whatever device you have the Word of God on. And I want you to see what God is saying <clears throat> to us on today. I'm going back to John 18 because I started a series last week called The Cup of Suffering. And the, the canopy of that subject actually is pulled out of the 11th verse in John chapter 18, where Jesus says to Peter, shall I not drink the cup of suffering that the Father has given me? And last week we perused through that passage and tried to extract those things that would be helpful for our own personal life and experience in our relationship with God. And one of the things we surmised is, is that not only does Jesus have a cup of suffering to drink, that, but that we all have our own cups of suffering that we drink from. And God has given us those cups of suffering for several reasons. One is for our growth. The cup of suffering helps us to grow. And it's, it's also for our good, ultimately. And then it's also for his glory. It's our good, our growth, and his glory. And we also talked about on last week how not only do we have a cup of suffering that we need to drink, uh, for God's glory and our good and our growth, but there are some cups in our lives that are not ours to drink. And we would do well to put those cups down and get out of God's way. <laughs> yeah, somebody say that part, that part, yeah, that part. In fact, just test somebody near you, if you somewhere, just look over somebody and say that part, that part. Put that in the chat, that part, that part. If you know that part was for you because you tend to, hold other people's cups and and help other people with their problems all the time. You do it too much. You jump into other people's fights and and you pay other people's rents and you you let other people use your car and you and you're babysitting everybody's kids and you're filling out paperwork for people and making sure they're paying their tickets and you're ripping and running behind everybody and, and you got your own cup. That part right there, that part. Put your cup, put the cup down. In fact, some of y'all, I had a picture I want to show you today. It's a picture of some of you because you don't just have a cup. Some of y'all got a tray full of cups. Do we have that picture of production? Can we put that picture up? Some of y'all got a tray full of cups and you're walking around like a waiter <laughs> or a waitress. And your cup is, and you got a tray. In fact, in fact I'm going to call you Trey now. I'm going to call you Trey. Not because you're the third person in your family with that name and not because it's short for Tracy. But I'm going to call you Trey because you, you're carrying a whole tray of people's cups. <laughs> and, and, and you really need you really need to put that whole tray down. In fact, somebody said, put that tray down. You need to put the tray down. Not just the cup. You need to put the whole tray down. That part. Amen. Amen. So, so that kind of encapsulates what we talked about on last week in part one. And if you didn't see part one or hear part one of this message, I, I would think it would be worth your time to take the time to review that message. God has some insight and some help in that message for you. Today, I want to revisit this passage in chapter 18 and see if we can re revisit the passage and see if there's some unmined or in this text that could be beneficial and valuable for us in our lives. And I'll pick up where we left off, beginning at verse 1, where it says, After saying these things, Jesus crossed the Kidron Valley, the Kidron Valley, with his disciples and entered a grove of olive trees. The Kidron Valley. I want to go back to the Kidron Valley. I talked about the Kidron Valley on last week and and mentioned the fact that it was a valley that remained dry throughout the year. It was only wet during periods following intense targeted rain. And I talked about how you can know you're on your way into a season when you're drinking, about to drink a cup of suffering when you're in a dry place. 
But the other thing I wanted to share that I didn't point out last week about this Kidron Valley is the, of the historical geographical synchronization, Deacon Bill, how you like that, of the Kidron Valley in the lives of two different leaders. Because it wasn't just Jews, Jesus who crossed the Kidron Valley right before his being betrayed by somebody in his inner circle. <clears throat> it was also a thousand years early, King David crossed this same Kidron Valley on his way to being betrayed by a man named Ahithophel, who was one of his inner circle and one of his trusted advisors. It blew me away when I made when I connected the dots between David a thousand years earlier going through the Kidron Valley, running from his son Absalom, who was trying to starting a revolt to take his kingdom from him. And by the way, that revolt was being masterminded by Ahithophel, who was David's chief advisor, who had turned on him and was now standing with them. Mm. And over a thousand years later, here comes Jesus, and he's crossing the Kidron Valley, and one of his disciples is standing with them, those who are coming to capture Jesus and harm him and to crucify him, named Judas. Ithophel, Judas, David, Jesus, thousand years apart. And look at the similarities. They both experienced betrayal at the Kidron Valley. And what is interesting about it is they both had men who had information about them, who knew something about them that they used to their own advantage, to the harm of their leader. It was close, it was personal, it was hurtful. But the thing that I want to point out about the two comparisons is that you may not know that following their betrayal that both Ahithophel and Judas hung themselves. If you research it, you'll find that brutal fact. Now, I didn't bring that up to be morbid. I didn't bring that up to berate or to continue to put down Ahithophel or Judas. In fact, I did it for the opposite reason. I did it because most of us will look, at the, look through the lens of Scripture and say, well, I know what it's like to be betrayed, but some of us know what it's like to be the betrayer. We always tend to look at Scripture through the lens of the person who was the victim, but sometimes we are the ones who cause the pain. And if you can relate to Ahithophel honestly, and you can relate to Judas honestly, you betrayed somebody, you stabbed somebody in the back. And I'm telling you, don't. it doesn't have to end this way. You can repent. Turn from your sin. Confess it. Say, God, I'm sorry. I did the wrong thing. I made a mistake. I should not have done that. And ask God to forgive you and repent and turn. And ask God, show, you, show me, Lord, show me how to make this right. Show me how to correct what I've done. Show me how to make right the things, the mistakes that I've made so that I can live a better life in the future, so that I can recover from this. You don't have, it doesn't have to end like this. Your failure does not have to be final. That's my encouragement to you. Admit what you did. Don't try to justify it. Don't try to make it, gloss it over. You were wrong. You did it. Now confess it and repent. And God can give you a better future. He's faithful. He'll do that. I wish Ahithophel and Judas had just repented, confessed their sin, and let God heal and, and grace their lives. Well, let's continue. Verse 2 says, Judas the betrayer knew this place. Yeah, he knew this place. He knew this place. He knew this place because Jesus had, after, had often gone there with his disciples, Judas. Judas had been there before because Jesus had taken him there. The leading priests and the Pharisees had given Judas a contingent of Roman soldiers, verse 3 says, and temple guards to accompany him now with blazing torches, lanterns, and weapons. They arrived at the olive grove. Jesus fully realized all that was going to happen to him, so he stepped forward to meet them. And who are you looking for, he asked. Jesus, the Nazarene, they replied. By the way, I said last week, when you know it's your time for your cup, step up, step forward. 
own your cup. Who are you looking for, he asked. Verse 5, Jesus the Nazarene, they replied, I am he. Jesus said, Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. As Jesus said, I am he, they all drew back and fell to the ground. Mm, let me stop right there. Let me park right there. They all drew back and fell to the ground. What in the world is happening here? You have a band of soldiers and temple guards and military personnel all coming with lanterns and blazing torches and weapons coming to get Jesus. And when they find him, they fall over backwards. What is going on here? Well, first of all, understand this. This is not the first time they tried to arrest Jesus. There have been several, there have been several failed attempts to accost Jesus and to bring him into custody. There were times when they would have him trapped in the temple or some other place, and the Bible says he just slipped away. And Jesus said, because it's not my time yet. <laughs> you can't do this, it's not my time yet. But, but this night, you can tell that they were prepared for an all-night search. They got lanterns, they got, they got blazing torches, they got weapons. They're expecting to search the woods all night. Even though they got a spy on their side telling them about the place, they're expecting Jesus to go into hiding and slip and run away. But they cannot, they cannot afford to return to their authorities without Jesus this time. So they are prepared for an all night search for Jesus. And then when they arrive, one of these people stand up and say, who are you looking for? Now, when I said one of these people, we know it was Jesus, but they didn't know it was Jesus, number one, because it was dark. And number two, Jesus just didn't stand out like that. He wasn't distinguishable. In fact, Judas had told him, listen, arrest the one I kiss. When I go up and greet him with our normal salutations and I kiss him, that's the one. So when this person steps up and says, who are you looking for? They said, we're looking for Jesus of Nazareth. And he said, that's me, basically. I am he. First of all, they fell out and they were blown away. Like, this can't be this easy. <laughs> we... Is you? They were over. They were they were blown away because they were expecting this to be much more difficult. So, in the natural sense, part of this falling over was just shock. It was shock. But 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 then it can't just be natural, because how can all of them be on their back without Jesus using a weapon? They weren't hit with anything. They weren't struck with anything. There was no supernatural lightning or anything that happened. They just fell over. So something supernatural had to happen too. And one of the ways you discover what happened supernaturally is in the language of the text. When the Bible says, they said, we're looking for Jesus the Nazarene. <clears throat> in the English translation, it says, Jesus says, I am he. Now, he did not say that's me. He says, I am he. But in the Greek trans, in the Greek language which he spoke, the word he is not present. This is very important. The English translations, English translators included he to make it make English sense. But while making it make English sense, it loses the profundity of the statement. All Jesus said was, I am. <laughs> and when Jesus said, I am, <clears throat> he was... He is literally saying the name Yahweh, which is Jehovah. And he is placing himself on a par of equality with God himself. He is not just saying, I am Jesus of Nazareth, but I am, period. And when they heard him just say who he was, they fell down. That is supernatural. That was supernatural. I am. Not, not, that's me. I am. <laughs> and they fell over. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Without a weapon, he, he never put his hands on them. He never swung anything at them. He never aimed anything in their direction. He just said who he was, and they went down. Woo. My God. Listen, listen, listen. I've said it before. I've said it before. But one of the greatest weapons we have is the power of his name. Mm. His name. <laughs> this power in his name. <laughs> There's salvation in his name. <laughs> There's deliverance in his name. <laughs> There's victory in his name. <laughs> the name of the Lord is a strong power. 
The righteous run into it and are safe. The name, the name, the name, the name, the name. Listen, 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 listen. See, 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 some of you are drinking a cup that's too strong to not have access to that name. And I came by to preach to you today. You better know how to use that name. Somebody help me say his name. Jesus. That's the name. Jesus. 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 Get comfortable using that name. Jesus. 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 When the doctors come to you and say, we found something in the, in the test. We found something in the labs and we need you to come in. Here's the name. Jesus. 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 When you don't have enough money to pay for what you need. And if you don't pay it, you're going to lose it. Jesus. 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 My child is in trouble. Jesus. 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 When I was growing up, they used to sing this song in the church. And I didn't understand it then, but I, I understand it now. Jesus. 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 There is something about that name. Yeah. Master, Savior, Jesus, let all heaven and earth proclaim Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Let all heaven and earth proclaim. I missed the verse. It said, like the fragrance after the rain. But here's how it ends. Kings and kingdoms shall all pass away. But there's something about that name. <laughs> you got to use that name. <laughs> when people coming at you and saying, hey, we got technical problems. It looks like it don't work. Jesus. 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 Somebody called out. Somebody called out. We don't know how we're going to make this work out. Jesus. 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 See, see, some of y'all, some of y'all understand. Is there anybody in here that understands the power of that name? Jesus. 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 Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. I need to say something because I feel I know how our church acts, acts, and I need to say something protocol while right now, because my wife just walked downstairs. She's clapping right now. And I know how our church apps operates. Here's what I want to know. See, some of y'all in Landover right now, I can't see y'all, I can't hear y'all. I don't even know what's happening right now. I can't see y'all and I can't hear y'all. But I know how some of y'all act. Some of y'all are standing up right now. I know y'all. And you need to be shaming yourself because you're blocking people. You know people trying to see the screen and you standing up in front of people. And, and they don't, you need to sit right back down because people can't see. And you up there standing up. And the reason why you need to sit down is because they, they don't understand you can't help it. <laughs> You can't help it. You can't help it. Just the mention of that name <laughs> will make you walk down the steps with your bonnet on. My wife came down the steps with her bonnet on. I can't put her on camera. She would kill me. From upstairs, listening to the message, there's something about the name. The name. Something about the name. If you want to start a riot, mention that name. You want me to stand up in front of you without caring, mention that name. You want me to act a fool up in here, say that name. All you got to do is say that name. Say that name. What you talking about? That name healed my body. That name got my children covered. That name kept me from killing myself. That name got me to this point in my life. That name is the reason why I know my name today. I don't play about that that name. Jesus. 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 Somebody just take five seconds and give Jesus a praise for that name. Mm. Mm. The name, the name, Jesus, 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 Jesus will make the enemy fall back. Jesus, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the name of Jesus will send it back. There's no other name under heaven whereby we can be saved but the name of Jesus. Demons tremble at the name. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Like the fragrance after the rain. Master, Savior, Jesus, let all heaven and earth proclaim kings and kingdoms, 
will all pass away. But there's something about that name. Mm. Kings and kingdoms <laughs> will all pass away. Mm. Whew. But there's something about that name. All my money is on that name. I know this ain't cute. I know this ain't fashionable. I know it ain't fancy. I know you brought your little friend to church hoping that the pastor would have something profound to say. I got three words. Well, give him three of these. Jesus. 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 Give him that. Jesus. Jesus. Some of y'all walking around here acting like you don't know how to pray. All you need is, I got I got a prayer for you. It's one word, two syllables. Jesus. That's all you need. Jesus. You don't know what to say? Jesus. When you say Jesus, he says, say less. I got it. All I needed was an invitation. Jesus. 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 I got to get off this one. Jesus. 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 Woo. Hmm. Y'all sit down. I can't even see you or hear you, but I feel like you're interfering. Hmm. Hmm. Let me go back to this message. I'm in the message. So Jesus said, hmm. <laughs> you know what's funny? Everybody said, well, where is he going to be? Where is he going to be? What camp is he going to be? Does it matter? Does it matter? Are you getting the word of God? Is God ministering to you? See, y'all, y'all, y'all think things have to be like they were for them to work. Oh, y'all ain't ready today. Y'all ain't ready today. I ain't asked for COVID, but the word of God is the word of God. I don't care where you're preaching it from. I don't care where you're receiving it from. Kings and kingdoms shall all pass away. Programs and protocols shall all pass away. Campuses will pass away. Jesus, let me go. I got it. I told him I didn't need that much time today. Verse 7, verse 7, verse 7, verse 7, verse 7, verse 7. Hmm. Whew. Jesus said, let me, let me help y'all out. I'm going to ask y'all the question again. Y'all falling over on each other, falling out. Who y'all looking for? Let me start from the top. Who y'all looking for? <laughs> They got this up together and said it again. Jesus, the Nazarene, that's who we're looking for. He said, I told y'all, verse 8, I am. So listen, before y'all fall out again, since y'all came to get me, verse 8, let these other people go. Thank you, Lord. You came for me. It's my cup. Let everybody else go. Ooh, can I stop there for a second? Not only is Jesus protecting his disciples in this moment, but he's given us a picture of what he's done for us for all of eternity. <laughs> he, took, he took the fall and thought of us above all. He took the fall so that we could go free. Oh God, I can never thank you enough for paying for my freedom. It was in 1995. I had the privilege of speaking at an amazing conference at Evangel Church here in Maryland called Boot Camp. Boot Camp was just an incredible experience put on by uh, Pastor, now Pastor Kevin Matthews and Pastor Peyton Gray love them brothers. That was an amazing event. And one year they allowed me to speak. And if I remember correctly, that afternoon, I had spoken in the morning, I think. And that afternoon, uh, during break, uh, I went out to eat with my family at a restaurant in Greenbelt that was called Jasper's uh, Restaurant. And so my, my family and I were there eating following this service. And just uh, coincidentally, Evangel Church's staff, those pastors, a lot of leaders and 
key personnel and volunteer from the conference had also come to Jasper's to eat as well. They had a huge table, a section uh, to themselves, and my family was at a smaller table. And I'm sharing this story with you because of what happened. My father was there, Reverend Mac Battle. And I don't know if he's in, at home today or he's in Landover or Greenbelt, but my father was there and he was at the table with me and my family. And without us knowing it, he had gone to the management of the restaurant and told them he was going to pay for the meal. Now, what you have to understand is I knew he was going to do that for our table because he always does that. But what none of us knew was he was also going to pay for the meal of the table of all the people from Evangel Church who were there. He wouldn't cover their their meal. Now, let me explain something to y'all. These are my tongue-talking, Pentecostal, run around the church shouting Christian friends. These ain't no laid-back people. I'm talking about they don't play with it. You understand what I'm saying? So now, after they had ordered all that food and all those beverages, when they were waiting on the bill, and I don't know if it was going to be divided up or broken up at their table, when they got word that my father had covered all of their expenses, you could hear it in the restaurant. When I told you, there ain't no shame in their praise. Now, I shared that because my father was an archetype of Jesus in this story because no matter what they ate at that restaurant and no matter what they drank at that restaurant, they didn't have to pay for it because somebody else who had the ability to pay for it had covered it. I came to tell somebody today that whatever receipt the devil wants to bring to the Lord that you have consumed, that you have drank, that you have done, that you have said, every receipt the devil tries to bring, Jesus says, already covered it, already paid for it, it's covered. I got her, I got him, I got them, I got that. That's a blessing that he has covered everything and taken care of the bill. Thank you, Lord. Jesus says, that's my cup. My blood will pay for it all. Verse 10. Peter thinks it's fighting time. I talked about this last week. He pulls out his sword. He cuts off the ear of Malchus. Let me hurry up. The high priest's slave. And Jesus says to Peter, put your sword in your sheath. Put your sword in your sheath. It's not time to fight. It's, it's, it's not time to do that. Now, what I want to what I want to say to you, I want to I want to close this um, because I've taken more time than I thought I would. But I want to share with you that there are more. Every gospel writer has recorded this story of the arrest and betrayal of Jesus Christ. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John all record this event. And although each of them have their own nuances about this. Matthew is the one I want to look at today. I want to look at Matthew chapter 26. So if you have a Bible, I want to turn there, and that's where I'll close. In Matthew chapter 26, Matthew tells this story. Listen to what Matthew says, beginning in verse 47. It says, and even as Jesus said this, Judas, one of the 12 disciples, arrived with a crowd with a crowd of men armed with swords and clubs. They had been sent by the leading priests and elders of the people. 48, the traitor Judas had given them a prearranged signal. You will know which one to arrest when I greet him with a kiss. (laughs) So Judas came straight to Jesus. Greetings, Rabbi, he exclaimed, and gave him the kiss. Jesus said, my friend, go ahead and do what you come for. Then the others grabbed Jesus and arrested him. But one of the men with Jesus pulled out his sword and struck the high priest slave, slashing off his ear. Watch this, verse 52. Put away your sword, Jesus told him. Those who use the sword will die by the sword. Those who use the sword will die by the sword. Let me say this really quickly. Peter, if you don't stop learning, if you don't learn 
how to stop reacting with violence to things that you disagree with, you're going to die the same way you responded. I'm talking to somebody today. If you live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword. And we're losing too many lives in the streets of people dying by stuff because it's how you live. It's what you live by. You live by a code that's not you. That's not worth you losing your life. You live by a code that I ain't no sucker. I ain't no punk. I ain't no chump. And so we got people dying in the streets over stuff that ain't even worth losing their lives and all the pain that it's causing your family. You have got to learn a new way of responding to disagreements. Walk away, man. Walk away. Who cares? Listen, if somebody calls me out my name and says something disrespectful about me, yes, my flesh will rise up. Yes, I want to react and respond. But then I think about if somebody calls me that, that I make it true. Who cares what they think? My life is more valuable than their opinion. Your life is more valuable than their opinion. And what does it matter if you're dead? What did you prove? Now all the people that love you have to, have to, have to try to figure out how to go on without you because you had a point to prove. We got to figure out another way, a more prudent way of existing with disagreements and somebody cutting us off or somebody calling us out our name. Yes, it's offensive, but it ain't worth me spilling my blood. Jesus said, put your sword up. This is not worth your blood. This is my cup. My blood will save the world. Your blood just going to make people cry. Don't waste your blood over some words. You live that way, you're going to die that way. I'm pastoring somebody right now. Somebody needs to hear this. Those codes that getting people locked up and shot and killed before they even get to live their lives. No, no, we need a different way of managing our aggression and our disagreement over basketball games and over girls and over neighborhoods. What is this about? It ain't even your neighborhood. You want to say this my, oh my God. Let me keep going. Hmm. Don't you realize, Peter, verse 53? I could ask my father for thousands of angels to protect us, and he would send them instantly. But if I did, how would the scriptures be fulfilled to describe what must happen now? Verse 55, then Jesus said to the crowd, am I some dangerous revolutionary that you came with swords and clubs to arrest me? Why didn't you arrest me in the temple? I was there teaching every day. But this is all happening to fulfill the words of the prophets as recorded in the scriptures. And watch this, y'all. At, at that point, all the disciples deserted him and fled. At that point, all the disciples deserted him and fled. I want to close by saying this to somebody. The cup is tough. The cup of suffering is tough. It's heavy. painful. In fact, sometimes we want to just say that the cup gets so heavy, we want to say, hey Lord, hey Lord, my, my cup runneth over. I don't mean that Psalm 23, I'm running over with blessings. I mean, Lord, this cup of pain is running over. I can't, I can't handle anymore. I understand what you're saying. He won't give you more than you can bear. You don't think you can, but he wouldn't give it to you if you couldn't bear it. And if it wouldn't make you better, if it wouldn't grow you, if it wasn't for your good and for his glory. But I want to tell you something else about this cup that makes it very painful. And that is the fact that it's very lonely. At this point, at this point, all of his disciples deserted him and fled. See, what makes the cup of suffering so hard sometimes, y'all, what makes it both painful and precious at the same time is sometimes you find yourself drinking a cup and ain't nobody there but you and God. If you know what I'm talking about, just say, Pastor, I'm tracking with you. Now understand, it's not that it starts that way. 
It didn't start that way for Jesus. They were with him when this all started. He had 11 disciples with him when he crossed the Kishon Valley. Judas wasn't with him, but the other 11 were. Then he, then he got in the Garden of Gethsemane. He had three of them, but one of them betrayed him, and then three of them couldn't even stay awake, stay awake and keep him in prayer. Jesus said, can you pray with me? Can you stay awake and pray with me for one hour? By the way, no disrespect to Jesus. I'm really talking to us. I think we got to be careful about asking people how we ask people to pray for us. I hear this all the time, and it's, been, it's bothered me forever. But the way we ask people to pray for us when we're dealing with our own cup, when people have their own cups themselves to deal with. I think it's fair to ask somebody, hey, can you say a prayer for me? Or can you pray for me? I think that's a reasonable request. But to ask somebody this, this is what we say, can you keep me in prayer? Keep you in prayer? Keep you? Can, yeah, keep me lifted. Keep you lifted? That ain't a request. That's a job. Keep you all day? Full time? Man, keep you lifted. How about I how about I lift you up one time and tell the Lord to keep you? <laughs> I got my own cup, right? I think we'd be asking too much of people. Yeah, y'all keep me, keep me ever before the Lord. How huh? ever? Just ask somebody to pray for you. That's fine. Can you pray for me? Can you say a prayer for me when you if you think about me, pray for me? That's that's fine. That's fair. Ask the people to pray for you, to keep you lifted. And then we need to stop telling people we're going to keep them lifted. What does that mean? 24-7? How are you going to keep somebody lifted? How you know they ain't fall while you asleep? Stop saying that stuff, y'all. Stop. Stop it. At least around me, I don't want to hear. You're lying. You're being selfish. Anyway, let me go back to this. It wasn't that they weren't always with Jesus. They left him at this point. See, there comes a point when people will depart you while you're drinking your cup. There comes a point. Notice the point with Jesus. It was after they, they, they saw Judas, one of man, he 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 with them. And Jesus called him friend and letting them kiss him and all that, man. Come on, man. Then when Peter tried to start a fight, Jesus said, nah, put that up. We're not doing that. And he's letting this go. And that's it, man. This ain't getting no better. We out. See, once people can't see that your situation is going to get any better, they out. That's how it goes. Because they got their own stuff. That ain't mean they don't care about you. They say, hey, they don't need me. This, this ain't getting no better. And you know what God is using it for? To show you that I can still get my assignment done even without all the support you thought you needed. Whew. You thought you needed him. You thought you needed her. You thought you needed them. You thought you needed that. You thought you had to be at church to preach. I can pull all the support you thought you needed and still get the assignment done. That's a cup. I want to show you how great I am when you're working with what you thought you need, when you're working without what you thought you needed and you're working without who you thought you needed. If they're not there, you don't need them. See, your assignment is more important than the people or the things. And sometimes you got to go through it's gone. You got to go through it's done and we're done so you can hear well done. Oh, I'm going to say that again. Sometimes you got to go through it's done and we're done on my way to well done. And God, and, and here's how you know you're maturing. Here's how you know you're maturing when you can accept and embrace the probability that what once was and who once was there may never be there again. And you still going to get your assignment done. And you're not longing and saying, I got to have that back. I got to have it back. I got to have them back. If, if you needed them, if you needed it, You'd have it. Whatever you got left is enough to get the assignment done. That's it for me. It's been real. 
I want to pray with you, but I want you to reflect for a moment. I want you to reflect. I want you to reflect. Bow your heads, if you would. Bow your heads. I want you to reflect. As the musician plays softly, I want you to reflect. What, what do you hear God saying to you? What do you hear? What, are you, what is he telling you today? What is God telling you? Even though you want to hear him clearly, you want to see. What is he showing you? Peter was hard of hearing and seeing. He wasn't listening right, wasn't seeing right. Why does he think he's supposed to fight? Didn't you just see me make all them people fall on the ground just by who I am? You're not seeing, you're not hearing. Oh God, give us eyes to see what you're saying, ears to hear what you're saying to us so we don't miss it. What do you hear? What do you see? Oh, thank you for your word. It is a lamp to our feet. It's a light to our path. Help us to not just hear it, but to heed it. In Jesus' name.